You're looking at a spider web. This web is engulfing entire trees at Arkansas Bend Park in Travis County, Texas. Here's another spider web. This one's on Starnes Island on Lake Travis, just west of Austin, Texas. See all the nice little spiders? Uh, don't you think this web is bigger than it ought to be? These sheets of silk extend from tree to tree, and they are covered in spiders. Here's another giant spider web. This one's also in Texas, but this one is on Lake Tuakini. This is Wind Point Park on the North Shore. The spider webs wrapped these 30 and 40 foot trees like cotton candy. And here we are at Texas's Lake Tawakini State Park where the first giant web was discovered. This is the web that made news around the world. Sheets engulfing trees. But the spiders weren't just making sheets. Here they pack a messy tangle web. So what exactly happened in Texas in the summer of 2007, when in at least four locations, giant spider webs were found engulfing trees? Here we're looking at sheets that drape over trees and extend from tree to tree. This one formed virtually overnight over a trail at Lake Tawakini State Park. These giant webs were new to the scientific community. They had not been previously documented. However, people have seen them before. They've been seen at Lake Noonan in Florida. They've been seen in the LA area. And they've even been seen elsewhere in Texas at Lake Somerville. The baffling thing was that scientists did not know what spider anywhere on the planet could make a web such as this. A web so large, made of sheets of silk, engulfing trees. They did know that it somehow had to be the combined work of many spiders. Some of us sitting in our homes thought the web might have been created by webworms. These are webworm nests you see here. But webworms eat and kill the leaves that their webs envelop. These leaves are dead. Webworms also leave pellet-like feces called frass in their webs. Here at the giant web, the leaves are green and quite well, and there is no frass, but there is a spider. Knowing that the web was full of spiders, one of the first theories was that it was the result of a failed dispersal of spiderlings. The idea was that many spiderlings floating through the air all accidentally landed in the same place. Some scientists thought it had to be some kind of funnel spider making the web because funnel spiders make sheets. There were numerous funnel webs in the giant web at Lake Tuakini, but they were small and self-contained, and there were few at other locations. In well over a hundred hours of observation, this is the only funnel spider I ever saw actually out on the web. Another theory was that the social cobweb spider, Analosimus studiosus, was making the web. But their webs look like fist-sized balls, such as this. Here's what this small spider looks like. This bush is covered in Analosimus studiosus webs, but they're hard to notice. The spider was present at all the webs, but it was uncommon at Lake Tawakini State Park. One spider was extraordinarily abundant in all of the webs. That's a clue. This was the long-jawed orb weaver called Tetragnatha guatemalensis which we will call the Guatemalan long-jawed spider. Despite its name, this spider is common across the Americas. Here's the female in its characteristic pose, mimicking a twig. The female has a large grayish abdomen. Here's the male having a narrow yellowy-orange abdomen and the long jaws that give the spider its name. Thought you might like a headshot of the male. Look at those long jaws. He has such pretty teeth. But there's a bit of a problem with the idea that the Guatemalan long jaws were making the giant webs. 
Guatemalan long jaws are orb weavers. They make orb webs like you see here. You know, like in Charlotte's web, the kind of web with the spokes and the spiral. No spider known to make the web, and so many spiders in the wrong kind of web. What's going on here? To answer this question, we have to visit Lake Tuacni State Park. Here we are on the shore of Lake Tuacni, on the peninsula where the giant web was found. We have to step beyond the yellow caution tape and watch the spiders up close. During the day, the adult long jaws just sit tight doing nothing, or cleaning their feet like this one here. The young spiders, like the one in the foreground, run around all day long. But at dawn, and again at dusk, every day, the Guatemalan long jaws would make orb webs, just as we expect. But virtually all of the long jaws making orb webs were female. Here a male watches in bafflement. Here is an exception. This is a male in an orb web. I never actually saw a male make an orb web. However, I did once see a male bully a female, chasing her away, and then take position at the center of her web. At night, many other kinds of orb weavers would come out of the giant web and build orb webs too. This is a Metazykia Whitfeldi in the family Areniidae, the regular orb weavers. In all four webs, the long-jawed orb weavers greatly outnumbered the regular orb weavers. Curiously, the regular orb weavers tended to paper the outside of the giant web with their orbs, while the long-jawed orb weavers tended to make smaller orb webs behind them. Just as the spiders finished building their orb webs, midges would come in off the lake in clouds. Midges are little flies that look like mosquitoes, but they don't bite. Just like mosquitoes, they live their larval stage in the water and emerge as adults. Here they're emerging from the water at dusk. That high-pitched buzz you hear is the sound of thousands of midges flying towards land to mate and roost. At Wind Point Park, as the midges were coming in, I walked out on a pier, over the lake, to a light. Look how dense the midges were. Imagine all these midges flying in to roost on the trees. But look what's waiting for them in the trees. Many thousands and thousands of spiders are in just the right spot to feast on them as they land. These spiders don't even have to wait for the midges to land. They have special hairs on their legs that allow them to hear the buzzing of midge wings. Now get ready. You see that spider below and the midge on the web above? Watch this. The midge flew and the spider jumped up to catch it. In the light of the lamp, this spider hardly has to lift a fink, lift a tarsus to catch any of its dinner. This spider is chowing down on a ball of several midges, and it caught them without the help of my lamp. Is it any wonder that the spiders are doing so well, making all that silk we see? Not all of the spiders are in orb webs, though. Some of them are on the move. This one is examining a midget found stuck in the web. Hmm, no good. Remember, it was mostly the female spiders making the orb webs. What are the males up to? It looks like the males are just wandering. The females are making orb webs. Who's making all the sheets and tangles? Here's another male. Whoops, run! Oh, looks like they found a friendly way to pass each other. Well, with food so abundant, who needs to eat the neighbor, right? So what are the males up to? Why aren't they making orb webs like the females? Oh, I see. The males are wandering in search of mates. Here's another mating pair. And another. Okay, lights out. 
It's before sunup. We're under the giant web at Lake Tawakani State Park, beside a bog, where the frogs play. Oh, look what we have here. It's a different kind of spider. It's a regular orb weaver. This is also a male, probably a male furrow spider, a Larinioides cornutus. It's also looking for a mate. There weren't as many regular orb weavers wandering around, but there were a few. Okay, so the males are wandering around everywhere looking for mates. But why does the web look the way it does? How are the spiders making these sheets? Oh yeah, consider this. For most spiders, virtually everywhere the spider goes, it always leaves a trail of silk. See this male long jaw making silk lines? One evening I witnessed these wandering males make a sheet. Unfortunately, by the time I realized what was going on, it was too late to capture it on video. Here's what I saw. One evening I watched a Neoscona crucifera build a rather large orb web. We'll illustrate what happened with this photo of a furrow spider in her orb web. First, the orb weaver made an orb on the periphery of the giant web. A male long-jawed spider would come visit the web to see if it held a female long-jawed spider. The orb weaver would sense the intruder and test the web. The male long jaw would say, whoa, that's no female. It would skirt the web and then wander off. That red line you see is a thread of silk that the spider left behind as it traveled. We'll turn each thread white when we're done with it. Here comes another long jawed spider checking out the orb looking for a female. It too wanders off. As the many male long-jawed spiders wander the web looking for females, they're very curious about the orb webs. They're very cautious of orb webs that belong to orb weavers of other species. They skirt around these webs, continuing on their search. They're almost always laying line behind them as they travel. At first they skirted just the periphery of the orb web I saw, but eventually the lines they were laying began to encroach on the center of the web. The lines seem to desensitize the orb weaver to the periphery of the web and allow the long-jawed spiders to cover more and more of the orb. In the morning, the orb weaver retired from her web and most of the orb became a sheet. The regular orb weavers, orb weavers of the family Areniidae, were quite abundant on the giant web at Lake Tawakami State Park, although the long-jawed orb weavers still far outnumbered them. It's likely that the regular orb weavers contributed greatly to the massive web. But their orbs would never have become sheets if it weren't for all the long-jawed spiders wandering everywhere. Besides, there were places in the giant webs where the long jaws were common, the regular orb weavers uncommon, and yet there were still sheets of web. And at all of the giant webs, there were expansive sheets full of nothing but long-jawed spiders. How are they doing it? What are we missing? Wait, what's this? This is a spider in an orb web in the middle of a sheet. This orb web is in the middle of a sheet. And check this out. This is an orb web. We're looking at an orb web. But watch. It shares one edge with another orb web. Two orb webs in the same plane. Could this be the start of a sheet? I set up this frame on Starnes Island in an attempt to scientifically document a sheet being made. With pen and paper in hand, I watched for four hours. Only one spider ever visited the frame. I gave up, took the frame down, and went home. I came back the next morning. And, Arr!
Right where I had been standing, there was the makings of a brand new sheet. It wasn't where I'd put the frame, it's where I'd been standing to watch the frame. This sheet consisted of seven connected orb webs. Let's count them. Here's one. Two. Three. Four. I couldn't reach them all with my camera. Here we're having another look at them. I tried everything to get a good photo of these. I finally settled on misting them with a spritzer, which made them visible to the camera. Wait, where are all the spiders? The webs are empty. Nocturnal spiders typically tear down their webs in the morning. They roll the silk into a ball and then eat it. This allows them to reuse the protein in the next night's web without them having to worry about the web being destroyed and the silk lost during the day. This Guatemalan long-jawed spider is doing this just as we expect. But most were not. Most were leaving their webs up during the day. This orb weaver is tearing down its web one pie slice at a time and eating it. It may be that few orb weavers of any kind were doing this in the giant webs. This behavior actually isn't unheard of among orb weavers. It's known for certain species that when food is plentiful, they'll just leave their webs up. Okay, so what have we figured out? Hordes of midges are coming off the lake and swarming into the trees, where the spiders busily catch them and gobble them up, gorging themselves. And bloating with excess protein, they don't bother recycling their webs. Sometimes they'll even connect many orb webs together. Males wander into them looking for females, dropping line on the orbs as they go. And gradually, all those wandering males turn the orbs into sheets.